Hi, glad to see you back on my channel. Are some killers worse than others? If you're still unsure about the answer to this question, watch on. But be warned, this case is about to get as tragic and outrageous as it can get. If you're ready, let's dive in. Today's story takes us to Darlington in the Northeast UK. At first glance, this 100,000 people city is as sweet as its name. Narrow streets, chic cafes, and a peaceful atmosphere that makes you feel safe. But as always, not everything is as it seems. Darlington has a huge unemployment rate, which often goes hand in hand with substance abuse and alcoholism. Such was the case with young David Harker in 1999. He'd been unemployed for a while and had made a habit of drinking during the day. But to everyone who knew him, he looked like he couldn't hurt a fly. Harker was the nicest bloke I'd ever met at the time, the nicest person. And the first thing I noticed was his eyes, big eyes, blue eyes. But he was always the center of attention with his bottle of white stuff. David Harker had moved to Darlington in 1995, hoping for a fresh start. He'd had a rough childhood and troublesome teenage years, being in and out of police scrutiny. At 23, David was a part of a teenage gang in Darlington. His bestie, Max, being only 16 years old at the time. Perhaps even more strangely, David was 6'5". He was pretty clearly the odd one out. He used to just come round and like have his dinner and stuff like that with us. And when he got on with my mom and my sister and things, so when he said he had nowhere to stay, we just let him stay for a bit. And it just ended up being longer than we expected. David lived at Max's place, and Janet's, who was just 11 when they became friends. But he was kind, polite with his friend's parents, and always helped his friends with groceries and homework. And things were about to change for the better. In the late 1990s, David met a young woman, Becky, and they fell in love. Soon enough, they moved in together and made great friends with their new neighbors. When I first met Harker, he just came across as a nice person. He was just a nice person. He, he was even intelligent, kind of, in a way. He was just polite, charming. You could have a conversation with him. But David and Becky's relationship did not go very well. After a year, they broke up, and Becky moved out. This was the end of the world for David. He started drinking like never before, spending all his days in the local park with a bottle of White Star. Needless to say, this didn't boost his morale, it just sent him down a rabbit hole. It was during these months of depression and substance abuse that David met Julie Patterson. She was a fellow addict for all the tragic reasons. She had lost three children in a custody battle with social services, and she had become addicted to Valium. But Julie had a history of addiction. She liked to drink, but when she was depressed, you know, she went from an extrovert to an introvert. Julie had also moved to Darlington from Durham to escape a bad childhood and a tough life. She then met Alan, and the two would be together for three years. At one point in the relationship, Julie got pregnant with her fourth child, but Alan and she decided it would be best to give it up for adoption. However, this broke Julie's heart and made her spiral down with her addiction habits. She would also disappear from home for days on end. There'd be many times she'll get up, she'll say, I'm just going to the toilet, and that would be Julie disappeared. It'd be for a day, maybe just three days. The most was a week. Confused she was. When she'd get back home, she would be dirty, her hair uncombed and confused. She would hang out with the city's homeless people and drug addicts. She was a very vulnerable person, and Alan was at a loss. He simply didn't know what to do to help her, except be there for her when she was home. But on April 6, 1999, Julie would leave home again, after getting upset while watching Coronation Day. Alan did what he would usually do, wait for her to come back. But the days piled up and there was no sign of her. Alan even went to Julie's appointments, seeing her doctor and meeting with her daughters. I really started to worry when Julie hadn't turned up for her eldest daughter's appointment because Julie would not miss out. During the previous days, Julie had been spotted with David Harker at the local pubs. 
Janet and Max, David's friends, had seen the two very drunk on David's regular park bench. They didn't think anything of it as they didn't know Julie or her situation. Finally, Alan reported Julie missing. It was four weeks after her disappearance, but Alan told the police this wasn't the first time Julie had left home for days. The Darlington police realized Julie was a very vulnerable person, and she could have easily gotten in trouble during the last month. With all local inquiries failed, the police went to the newspapers. So really what we wanted to do was um, publish Julie's uh, photograph because she was of a very distinctive appearance uh, with a blonde hair and being a very pretty lady. Someone had to have seen her and called the police. They were in luck. A few days later, a witness called to say he recognized Julie from the papers and that he'd had a conversation with David Harker about her. He told the police to go investigate Palome Lane. At 2.30 a.m. the next day, Detective Ian Phillips made his way there. His team had already sealed off the whole area as the police dogs had found a bag. It's three feet long and at the most um, two feet wide. But to the physical eye, even with torchlight, it's very difficult to, to see uh, what it is. Uh, the one noticeable thing to me uh, immediately that there was a very, very uh, strong smell. Ian asked a resident about the bag, and she said that the bag had been there for about two weeks. She told him not to worry that it was probably just a dead dog. But Ian had a dark feeling about it all. He and his officers waited till sunlight. They could now see human shoulder blades through the bag. The detective apologized to his team for having to open the bag. Julie had been murdered, then butchered into tiny pieces. The bag only held a small piece of her body. The rest was nowhere to be found. This sent chills down the spine of every Darlington resident and anyone who read the news. This was a peaceful railroad town with almost no murder history whatsoever. There was a massive amount of public interest and just shock. You know, who could have done this in this town? And how could this happen? But when Max saw the news, he put two and two together, even though he didn't want to believe it. Harker used to tell us stories in funny voices about how he was going to take us down dark, secluded alleyways and kill us and that, but we used to just laugh it off, you know, and then think it was funny. Not even his younger friend Janet found him menacing. He'd get his attention from saying he was devil man. And I used to think, I used to find it amusing, I used to laugh at him. On April 18th, David boasted to Max about chopping up Julie and putting her limbs in a bag on Palome Lane. But David was extremely drunk and Max simply thought he was talking nonsense. There was another factor. All David's friends were considerably younger than him. Harker had uh, been quite a, a dominant figure in that, that group of uh, people that uh, he was always out to impress them, to shock them. Max, Janet, and the other friends were simply used to David saying sensational things, but this time, they knew it was real. Max had tipped the police off to Palome Lane, and then Max called the police to point them in David Harker's direction. Within a day, he was brought in for questioning. He had shaved his head and had tattooed superhuman on one side and disorder on the other. He went willingly to the station and spoke to the police about his version of the events. He said he had met a woman in April, but her name was Roxanne and had nothing to do with Julie. But on the second interview, upon more pressure from the officers, David started to be very agitated. He then told the police it wasn't him, it was the voices that told him to do it. The Darlington police finally had a reason to go and investigate David Harker's derelict home. After finding the bag on Palome Lane, the detectives were all afraid to step inside his horrific home. As soon as they opened the door, their worst fears were confirmed. And we saw what appeared to be this, the trail of blood leading from a cupboard underneath the stairs. The police found Julie's clothes and her blood. This meant David had killed her inside his house, but he dragged her outside afterward. David had also kept Julie's trainers neatly displayed as trophies on a kitchen shelf. The detectives also found poems written on the few walls that were painted. 
David wrote that he had lost the will to live, but also that he had been reborn God size. The house was a horrific sight with almost no light, shut windows, blood stains, and an overwhelming feeling of gloom. The idea that Julie had spent her last moments in there was terrifying, even for the police. David Harker was arrested and charged with the murder of Julie Patterson. He didn't accept the overwhelming evidence. He was adamant he'd been the victim of the voices commanding his actions. who knew Julie and David were sickened by the news. Who could ever suspect their friend cutting a woman into pieces? The police wanted justice for Julie's family. They had to find her body. But all their leads were times David had boasted about disposing of her body to his friends. He told people he'd put the head uh, down a drain. He told other people he'd thrown uh, the rest of the body in the river. He told other people that he disposed of the arms and the legs uh, by putting it out in domestic waste. However, he told many stories and many were conflicting. The police searched everywhere. The drains, the river, even people's trash cans. The worst moment of the search was when a 50 strong team went to Coxho Rubbish Tip, one of the biggest landfill sites in Europe. After searching through 20,000 tons of garbage, the police gave up. On July 21st, 1999, a funeral was finally held for Julie, but this brought little to no closure to her devastated friends and family. She'll never be at rest. None of us will be at rest until they find all the other parts, put them together and bury her properly. Meanwhile, David Harker was transferred to a psychiatric hospital for an evaluation. As soon as he got there, he started boasting about the murder. He wanted to be known as the youngest serial killer in Britain. Apparently, Julie was just his first victim. He bragged about killing two other people, but as the police investigated this, they found no evidence. Furthermore, David told his colleagues at the hospital that he had even eaten a part of Julie's thigh with garlic cheesy pasta. It turns out that David's hero was Jeffrey Dahmer, the famous cannibal killer. But the police could never prove if David had really eaten his victim. David's psychiatrists diagnosed him as a psychopath. This means not only that he lacked empathy and that he couldn't distinguish or didn't care about right and wrong. This means that he lived in a fantasy imagining himself as a notorious killer up there with Dahmer. They are imagining themselves as notorious or famous, as they would put it, killers. So they build up this fantasy life of, of great acts that they have done. All his life, David wanted to be famous. For his first two decades, he wanted to be a rock star. But after years of unemployment, depression, anger, and substance abuse, David decided to be a famous serial killer. David Harker is now in prison and has recently reached parole time. But in October 2021, he was denied parole on the grounds that he never revealed the location of Julie's body. In a really creepy final twist, David sent the Northern Echo a riddle. If they guessed it, he said, they would find Julie's body. I own a bank but have no money. I have falls but keep going. I have a mouth but do not eat. I have a bed but do not sleep. I have a beginning but no end. What am I? Do you know where it is? Call it evil, mad, or simply awful. This is the story of David Harker and Julie Patterson. Thanks for watching. What do you think about this case? Can you solve the terrible riddle? As always, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. See you next time and stay safe.